Over the last 24 hours, a significant increase of cyber attack rhetoric has emerged. In particular, FBI Director Christopher Wray warned at a conference in Munich that computer attacks are at a scale greater than we've ever seen before, as vulnerable critical infrastructure remains at risk to be targeted. This comes as so many others have warned about this over the years. So why are so many people across all sides, black hats and white hats alike, hyping up an imminent cyber attack? On one hand, you got the global elites, like Klaus Schwab speaking at the World Economic Forum, saying, Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. And even the media has slipped up, foreshadowing and giving us warnings. Well, mine's a little dark. I just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. Mm -hmm. This is a national security event with high impact that's very hard to predict. Um, There are a number of uh, concerns that I have that factor into that. Not only this uh, sort of enduring heightened threat level that we're facing, uh, the wars in Israel, also Ukraine. And we're so divided in this country in ways that we haven't seen before. And I think that just creates fertile ground for our adversaries like North Korea, China, and Iran. And that's what uh, concerns me most. And given the upticks in hacks we've seen recently, especially with 2023 being the largest year on record for cyber attacks, as well as the recent January Moab, the mother of all data breaches, being the largest data breach and leak we've seen to date. All kinds of personal data, consumer data, and with the elections coming up, it's no wonder that people are hyping up an even greater cyber attack. And this comes at a time for which the idea of predictive programming is gaining significant momentum because of how everything played out during COVID. And spiritually speaking, many others believe the notion that in order for satanic or malevolent plans to succeed, the perpetrators prior to them acting out their evil must disclose this to the general public and to their victims, what they would be doing either overtly or in a hidden or symbolic manner. Okay, so let's say it's difficult for you to believe any of this, but let's think about this logically, rationally. Why would, whether black hats or white hats, have a threat of attack or why would they use it to their advantage? A cyber attack is a small tactical maneuver in relation to something bigger, a bigger purpose. The same happened, if you want to believe this, in 2020 when they had the COVID biological attacks happen so that they can try to disrupt the 2020 elections and many other reasons. And whether you want to say Trump is the enemy from the black hat perspective or that he's a good guy from the white hat perspective, Trump is peanuts compared to the bigger thing that's happening. And what's happening is a mass population awakening. They do not, from a black hat perspective, they do not want you to wake up to what's happening. And from a white hat perspective, there's a global takedown happening as we speak. And for both sides, a cyber attack will be of great gain for them as they try to complete this war. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about some of these things, answering the question of who, what, when, and why. Just a few months ago, a movie with executive producers Barack Obama and Michelle Obama called Leave the World Behind portrayed a post-apocalyptic, post-cyber attack world. And the creepiest part about all of this was that the movie sensibly outlined the most, quote, cost-effective way to destabilize a country, end quote, which involved a three-step process. Number one, isolation, meaning to disable all communication and transportation, making people deaf, dumb, and paralyzed. Step two, synchronized chaos, which would instill terror with covert attacks and disinformation with no clear entity. And step three, civil war and collapse. And this would be happening naturally, whether it's a coup d'etat, whether it's infighting, natural progression of disorder over time among the local communities. And I'm not trying to scare anybody, but before 2020, people laughed at the idea of a pandemic and a global shutdown. But look what happened. And when people are giving these warnings, nobody's laughing anymore. If you were smart, you would not be naive, but rather you would get right with him, with the Lord, pray and prepare accordingly in how God is leading you. Last month with the Moab, we've already had massive data breaches and attacks 
on corporate infrastructure, like data centers hosting private information. But now there's the idea being seeded that these attackers, black hat government entities, whoever it is, that will attack critical infrastructure, like gas and power grids, telecommunications, satellites, the internet, and a slew of other things. Okay, so given this intro, one looming question you may have immediately is, what about me? What can I do to protect myself? Well, let me answer that very quickly before we move on to our topic. But there is one thing among many that you can do immediately. And to be transparent, this recommendation happens to be the sponsor for this video and for good reason. I've partnered with Aura.com, a leading digital security services company that helps people protect their identity, credit, online access, privacy, so many things. They're industry leading in financial fraud and identity protection services. Most solutions are point services, meaning they're segmented and they're not the all-in-one solution that one needs. Aura is different. First of all, they provide a crazy $1 million insurance coverage from identity theft and they provide a slew of other things like parental control, VPN services, all kinds of personal information and ID monitoring, device and network protection like antivirus, email alias, password manager services, and the list goes on and on. If you sign up from my link below, aura.com slash Chris Yoon, you will get a 14-day free trial and great rates. And I'll be honest, signing up through me helps this channel out tremendously because I get a nice referral bonus. I know many of you want to support me, but signing up for aura.com not only helps me, but it helps you and helps Aura, a win-win-win for all three of us. So check out the link today and sign up for aura.com. So let's get right into answering the question, who will do it, why they would do it, and when they will do it. And so I prepared something of a little chart, and quickly, we know it's either going to be the black hats, the bad guys, or the white hats, or the good guys. And I've said before, I've always talked about this, we're in a psychological warfare. We are in an information warfare. It's a fifth generation warfare. And so not everything is as it seems. Something that looks bad could have been done by the white, the white hats for a reason, or it could have been done by the black hats for a different reason. And a lot of it is because they're evil. Other things, it's blaming. So let's go through this. Why would each of these guys be responsible for some major cyber attack or a series of cyber attacks going into this year? Well, the first thing from the black hat side is that they want to blame somebody else. They want to antagonize they want to instill fear. They want to make it look like this is the good side. That is the bad side. Right here, I have already a flag, half China, half Russia. And of course, there is going to be this victim game. There's going to be this, oh, those guys are being demonized and we want to continually bombard you and say, those guys are bad. Russian, CCP, Chinese people, the, all these guys are bad, bad, bad. And they're pushing propaganda. They're using the media, as we know, as a tool to control the narrative and to brainwash you, if you, want, if you want to be honest, right? They may do this. Again, this, this, these are just some reasons we are hypothesizing of this imminent attack that's been so heavily covered. The other thing would be retaliation or blackmail. This is stuff that may not necessarily be public, but it's being done. And if you watch any movie, right? The bad guys, these countries, they're saying it. They're not going to go out in a press conference and say, hey, you know, we're trying to blackmail this country or that group, the White Hats, so this is why we're doing it. They're just going to do it. And the people that need to know will know. Uh, the other two in the bottom, defend, uh, DEF meaning defensive and the off, off meaning offensive. These are defensive measures or offensive measures. Defensive measures are that we know a lot of news is coming out right now, congressional hearings, whistleblowers, these guys, they want to defend and have a major kill switch. They want to have something that they can have in their back pocket to say, we need to disrupt the news that's being uh, basically going viral because people are waking up in mass right now. The last three, four or five years, even through Trump's presidency, all of this has been a catalyst for people waking up and they cannot afford to lose the major last ground that they have. They're doing their best to try to get at everybody, right? With all the cases going on, the the court hearings, all these things, their defensive maneuver is let's just have a kill switch, hack it, and have, a di and have this diversionary, uh, divisive, red flag, false flag event to move people in a certain direction. So this is why they have this in their back pocket. They could use this at any time in some sense. 
offensively, what are they what are they afraid of, right? This quote unquote election. And again, I'm speaking to audience two, but for audience three people, you know what's up, but they're trying to stop this quote unquote election for what's happening, especially as Trump gains more momentum. So this is what a lot of people theorized and have seen with the 2020 elections in terms of COVID and all of that, mail-in ballots and, and those things. I'm not gonna get into that here, but this is what we are seeing. What about the White Hats? The White Hats, you are seeing uh, this, and again, this is a little bit difficult to try to, to understand, but they disguise it as a black hat attack. If you're, if you're an audience three, you would know that we are in a stage of a great awakening. And a lot of it is acting, it's pre-planned, and it's being done for a reason such that we don't get into nuclear war and people by the millions die, but rather it looks bad and it is bad, but it's being done in order to shake you awake. Just like how God would allow you to go through some sort of trial and testing. And yes, it's bad. You're losing people. You're losing money. You're, you're losing your health in some sense. Think about the book of Job. But you're seeing this from the perspective of it's a necessary sort of tactic so that you would wake up. And so they're being fully controlled, as white hats you know, are, and they're disguising this as a black hat attack. So this is why Christopher Ray is coming out and, again, saying all these different things. And they have to act in a certain way so that they can achieve their objective, which mainly is to wake up the world. Ten days of darkness. A lot of people are theorizing what this is. I think it's some kind of actual power out, internet out, some kind of something, right? Whether it's an economic collapse, all these things, they will come sort of after this. But the question here is, when would this happen? A lot of people think, and if you look at some of the Q posts, there's many Q posts regarding what the 10 days of darkness are and when it is. Q says shutdown, right? Others talking about the clock starting. And even here it says disinformation exists and is necessary. 10 days, darkness, war, good versus e evil, right? So this is co uh, post 97 and the one before, 282. And then the same goes for the White Hats in terms of offensive measures and defensive measures. What is this whole plan that's happening right now? Offensively, it's to take down the deep state. So this could be a cover, a tactic, so that they can shut off communication temporarily during maybe this 10 days, during this time of mass arrests or whatever it is, as a cover for a military operation that we are not privy to get the full detail for. Because it's a time where we are living in an information age. As I've said before, you can't just come out and announce what you're doing. So Trump has said that before. We will never again announce what we will do with the military ever again. The defensive measure is ongoing, but it's basically there's a real war. There are real hackers. There are real, real cyber criminals, and they're trying to stop the hackers and what uh, basically is tracing. So they're trying to trace where all this is coming from. So whatever this back and forth sort of jousting is, this sort of boxing match, the point is, is that somebody who knows what they're doing on uh, the good side, as well as the bad side, and by that I mean that they have technical skills to do the hacking, they're doing something, just like with the elections, like they, you know, as Trump says, we've ca we caught them all, they're doing something to stop these hackers, and it's a back and forth sort of cyber attack battlefield that's happening, right? So the next question is, when will this happen, right? When will they do this? So let's look at a calendar for the rest of this year. Now, this is just generic, but the perspective from white hats and black hats are as follows. From the white hats, you're having people, and a lot of this is grouped up, and it's basically sort of the way I have it here is just it's between March and November up to the elections, is that at some point, if we do see either the 10 days of darkness or some way to kick off sort of the reset, the financial stuff, uh, and as well, mass arrests or some kind of public awareness of what's happening, of justice, you're going to see that at some point. And it's going to, from the, from the perspective of the 10 days of darkness, whenever that happens, it will be a maneuver from the white hat perspective to shock the remaining population awake. As more disclosure happens, as more congressional hearings, as more whistleblowers come out, this, this is going to act as a way to say, look at what's happening with, you know, ground level looting and chaos and all this stuff. And it's going to shock the rest of the people awake, especially as it heads into the elections. 
and the 10 days of darkness, there could be other reasons. I mean, we, we don't know. But this is from the 10 days of darkness perspective, as well as the ongoing military operation. If you follow some, you know, like, I don't want to say unsubstantiated, but I, I don't have proof of it, but mass arrests or some arrests, Guantanamo Bay, all these things, they're currently happening, apparently, right? But the other a- aspect here is that there's an underground warfare and the dismantling of the chemical chemical and biological weapons. We've seen the Ukraine stuff. We've seen the Israel stuff. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. But basically, there's something here that is uh, crimes against humanity, and people are trying to address it. So the military, this global sort of cleanup happening, it's happening and has been happening, but it's still going to continue going. But the, from the perspective of the final sort of battle, the 10 days of darkness or the cyber attack is necessary from their perspective such that they can finish the remaining operation. From a defensive posture, they're going to be in this defensive posture throughout the year because as well as when it gets closer to the elections, these guys are going to have to really be on their A game because Trump has said that they will not uh, steal this election. They're not going to come in and do whatever it is that they did with 2020 2022 and these things. So that was a trigger to allow devolution, to allow continuity of government to take place uh, when they attacked, right, and stole the election. So black hats, what are the black hats doing? The black hats, they would do this from the perspective of they are blaming China, Russia. They want to instill fear and division. They want to cause chaos. And there's also, like I said before, a silent war with regards to blackmail, and retaliation. So this message, the message that they're sending is not for you and me in some sense. It's for other people because they are on their last breath. They're trying to uh, defend themselves from what, what what is basically inevitable, right? And then when we get into the summer from the June period onwards, apparently we're going to get a lot more of these congressional hearings. We're going to get whistleblowers. That's going to increase the election campaigns, right? And I put this in quotes, but all of the, you know, the, the tours and these things. And as people hear more and more, as more and more people are galvanized towards Trump, they're galvanized towards uh, the issues at hand and how to, to deal with them. You got the immigrant crisis, so many things. They're going to uh, try to counter this, right? And the vi- vi- virality of people, you know, coming to one side, especially the right side and all these things, it's it's happening and it's going to progress into the summer. So this is a perfect opportunity from the black hat perspective to try to counter what's going on. The other thing would be story corrections and exposure. Everything from uh, F- Epstein all the way down to other things that have already been corrected in a sense. They say that Trump being spied on was all misinformation. It's all cap, right? It's all fake. And come to find out he was spied on and all this stuff It's coming out right now. And who's to say so much more will come out. It will be very damning evidence of of things. And the black hats are going to try to attack during this summer, spring period and going into the fall, into the elections. And then the last resort, again, would be into the elections so that they could either delay it, they can disrupt it, they can do what they can if their tactics are not working for you know, either the hacking or the mail-in ballot stuff or any other thing, if they don't have a good reason to steal, then they're going to use this hacking aspect and shut things down. So this is what we may see in terms of when they will do it. I know it's a little bit ambiguous, like it could be any time, but if you follow some of the detail, we are on high alert now. We are at a time for which you need to be prepared. You have to be prepared. I've said before, stock up a little bit. I'm going to continue talking about some of these things and what to do, but also be alert because, again, everything from Aura that I just promoted all the way down to your individual sort of well-being and how to eat and live and do these things, be ready. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but in the Bible, there are many stories for which people are not just sitting there doing nothing. They used their resources, whatever they had in abundance, and they gave to those that were in need. And this happened in the book of Acts, right? Into the new church. And so this is where we are at right now. Be ready as we reach out, outreach to other people and prepare for this time. So love you guys. Want to encourage you guys with this. More to come. Please spread this video to others. I really would love it to blow up if possible. And also, I'm still trying to get support from my GoFundMe. So 
Either way, this is helping me out a lot, but I'm doing this and you guys know, I don't just put out information, I do research. I want to make sure that the company, the messaging, the outlook, whatever it is, it's lining up, right? So do your research, look it up, and you would know that this is a good a company, speaking for Aura, as well as what I'm trying to do with my next venture in this business. So love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon.